Thank you, Tim. Um, I'm very happy to be here this afternoon to talk about uh, quite a passion of mine, which is um, supporting diagnostics and assessment in children um, with uh, neurological uh, neurodiverse um, diagnoses. Next slide, please. So Tally is um, storming new fronts on in two areas. One is um, working as a medical device um, and delivering a therapeutic digitally. So if we talk about the medical device part first, um, work at the level of um, the brain for children, frankly, and we're looking and depending on the neuroplasticity in children to um, provide early intervention in areas right now where there's not uh, intervention available early, particularly if you look at things like ADHD, where frequently the behavior is seen but the um, ability to intervene is not um, prescribed until later. So the average age of intervention for ADHD is seven um, and usually comes after quite a bit of uh, stress, family stress, school stress. Um, and so for understanding that for developmental issues, you're always, always, always going to get a better outcome if you start thinking about how you intervene earlier. So the medical device part of TALI works very much um, on an early intervention model that trains attention through gamification. The other part that's quite innovative and has been supported um, and pushed along, frankly, by COVID is the digital delivery. So for people working in medical devices or medicine, medicine is difficult to change and that's okay because uh, the reason for that is it takes a long time to build a core of evidence. And as a practitioner, you tend to stay with what you know. And so delivering care in a different way, um, people are gonna wanna see that it works. And um, prior to COVID, uh, there wasn't a huge take up of digital therapeutics, things that could be done outside of the office, but we're seeing a great deal of interest now in uptake. Um, for children, this becomes critical because if you think about children that have um, long-term disorders, chronic disorders, things that are not like a broken leg that you know has medical implications, but that ends at some point. Chronic disorders um, are things that have to be managed over the lifetime of the person. And the um, constant medicalization and interruption for the family through taking time off work or um, and certainly taking the child out of school um, is, is not highly desirable. And so the ability now for medical professionals to prescribe a therapy and monitor its use, but it's being used in the home is very important. An overlay to that too is working with children is that frequently when the children show up in your office, their behavior is different than what the parent describes. Um, it's better or worse sometimes, um, either way, but you know, you, they come in and, and the mom is saying, hey, he's never like this at home, you know, or you're not gonna see what I see. So being able to assess children and deliver therapeutics at home and record um, the outcome that a therapist then can look at and access through a portal to see how things are going actually becomes an invaluable piece of a diagnostic puzzle that is quite missing right now in, in how we deal with children. Uh, a few years ago, these types of medical devices, digital therapeutics became regulated globally. So in Europe, um, in the United States and in Australia, they're classified as medical devices. Um, and that Provide, that provides surety to the professional and to the family, but also gives um, uh, the need to present evidence, to have an evidence base for what you do. Um, the other thing that you're seeing now is because of all of these factors, the, the need to intervene earlier, the understanding of neuro, better understanding of neuroplasticity and digital delivery, you're starting to see an uptick in um, companies that are IPOing like the Achille company that we've got listed on the bottom of the slide there that will IPO um, soon at a high valuation in the United States. Um, Achille is also a strategic partner um, and will be how Tally goes to market in the United States as well. Next slide, please. So people say, ah, in attention, why is that important? Why, is it, why do you start with attention? Why not start with a diagnosis? Um, interestingly enough, attention is frequently the first symptom 
for a myriad of issues that you see in children. So you can have inattention in children that is quite typical and just a late development, but you also see attention as a core um, issue in things like ADHD, um, autism, anxiety disorders, other mental health disorders. So it's an early um, behavior that can be seen. And so it also uh, lends itself to understanding um, if you can work at the level of inattention, can you improve the upstream behavior um, impacts? So there've been quite a bit of work looking at inattention and these are just some facts and figures so that you can see that um, it is one of the more highly re uh, reported issues that parents and teachers see. Um, of the just my child's not paying attention, a significant portion of those go on to receive a diagnosis of some sort like anxiety or autism or ADHD. Um, and that's really where Tally shines. Um, as a medical device, there is the ability to work prior to a diagnosis if, if that is required. So you don't have to have a diagnosis to be able to access the tool and improve your attention. Um, it helps drive down that age of um, age of diagnosis, age of impact, because you don't have to wait to see the cluster of symptoms that are um, required to receive a diagnosis as listed in the DSM. You can start working early um, and it will take some of the burden off some of the healthcare systems, particularly in Australia now, developmental pediatricians and developmental psychologists um, the wait for a diagnosis for those professionals can be up to two years, which in an early intervention model um, is, is really, really tragic. Um, when you see a problem, the idea that you have to wait six months or a year or two years to actually receive a diagnosis in order to start therapy. Next slide, please. So this is just some facts and figures on the scale. The um, focus on the last few years of really trying to understand autism and ADHD and anxiety in children really comes from looking at what is the impact over the lifetime of people that have these diagnoses and understanding you know, if there can be better therapeutics um, and better support, can you reduce the overall burden, not just to the individual, but to society as a whole and to the economic, society, um, economic system as a whole? So next slide, please. So I wanted to break it down for just Australia um, because I think we get lost in the United States sometimes. So the market in the United States is obviously huge, but it's quite significant in Australia. And being an Australian company, we're really looking to make a difference here in Australia. Um, and, and while we are doing the go-to-market required activities in the United States, which is running studies um, for the FDA approval, we're also um, doing similar things in Australia to be able to help the kids here. So the market in Australia is significant um, and is um, probably not reported on in the same way that it is in the US. Next slide, please. So what I know about medicine is that you know that things will change when you start getting um, economic cost. So these are just two studies, one from the United States and one from um, that was done in Australia, looking at the cost of not doing anything or the cost of the current um, therapeutic and treatment pathway now. So um, these were both done looking at ADHD, which is a um, neurodiverse diagnosis. Um, and the cost is quite high to the burden to social and economic cost is quite high. I think there's been quite a bit of press lately about the untreated or undertreated adult and the high, um, the high reported um, mental illnesses and things that come from really struggling with these kind of uh, developmental disorders for your whole life. And what, and what that does. And again, it pushes this early intervention model that um, you know it's not as visible as some other disabilities, but if it's not um, addressed, it, it causes a lot of issues that have to be dealt with later. I think in, interestingly enough for things like ADHD, um, when I say this, people are a bit shocked. There's actually no treatment for ADHD. There is, um, there are things that you do for the end symptoms. So you have behavior modification um, where you see um, an OT or a psychologist to help you modify the behaviors that are causing you problems. 
Um, and then if, if nothing else, there's pharmacological treatment for the end behaviors. But again, at, when you're when you come off the drugs or when the drug wears off, you're back to where you started. And in this early intervention model, what we're looking at is we're really working at the level of the brain early on to see if we cannot um, modify those behaviors before you see them so that we can improve the signal so that the behaviors are not as strong or as not, you know, not as um, driving undesirable behaviors and outcomes. Um, next slide, please. And so what we have is a gamified solution. Anything you do with young children, therapy is provided through play, therapy, and games. Um, you know, now all children born are digitally native. They all play games. And so these games are uh, clinically proven through randomized control trials to demonstrate that you can improve attention, which again is a core um, core cognitive ability that you'd be looking to improve in this. And so we have a, an assessment tool called Detect and a training tool called Train that um, the child plays at home with the parents um, and then the um, professional monitors through a portal that they have back at the office. Next slide, please. Okay, any questions? We've got some questions. Thanks, Mary Beth. Now, you're a, a new CEO appointed recently. What, what attracted you to Tali? Um, I have been interested. So I my background is uh, uh, a clinical um, professional, and then I moved into research and academia. And then I moved to a medical device company for 16 years with the same interest, same area of interest, always chronic healthcare not just for children, but particularly in children because of the outcomes it drives later in their life. Um, the digital therapeutic, I think is, is, and I do hate the word game changing, but it is such an alternative to a model that is so heavy for the family right now. Um, so Tally attracted me because there's not a lot available for children um, that have neurodiversity um, diagnosis. And the help that is available is through the traditional medical model, which is take off work, take child out of school and go. So I've had a great interest in um, the digital therapeutics since they've come about. And um, I thought this was a great opportunity. And, and what's, what's the business model behind the product? So it's three professionals. So again, when you've got these, uh, when you've got children, a lot of children also have other conditions as well. Um, you don't want to uh, disintermediate the medical professional. So the medical model is working with the OT and the psychologist initially um, and their prescription of these tools. Australia doesn't require prescription, but we'd still call it a prescription because you have a medical professional that is judging that this is suitable for that particular child. In the United States, it is a prescription model, like you would get a script for um, you know, a, pharm a pharmaceutical. But it is through that we work through the medical professionals um, and then they prescribe this to be used at home. And so when, when you push this into the US, it, it requires FDA approval? Um, yes, it requires TGA approval here in Australia as well. And uh, the e-marking in Europe. And, and just quickly, we've got to finish up. What, what's the kind of uh, the milestones looking ahead? Um, looking ahead will be um, the, uh, the model, the business model here in the United States, um, delivering on that. Um, and we'll be ramping up that over the next few months. Uh, new product delivery as well. Um, and then in the United States, we'll be um, knocking off the clinical trials that we need to do. Um, and right now we're in the pilot stage um, and we'll be delivering a pivotal trial to do that. And then we will um, exercise the agreement we have with Achille and sit in their dis distribution model in the United States. Mary Beth, nice to meet you. Thanks for your time. Um, we'll follow the story with interest. Have a nice weekend. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye.